welcome guys to the city rev life podcast my name is jeremy we've got roby here with us um we are in our series uh on empathy uh we've been hitting a couple of very important things regarding the the realm of em- empathy as far as its centrality empathy and eq the power um that em- empathy has uh you mind giving a recap of each of those things sure Robbie? yeah just real quickly you know we've been talking about the idea of empathy this is a buzzword, um, but it really is something that's very central to the scripture. And so we, we've taken it back to what Jesus uh, defined in the golden rule. He says, uh, do to others what you would want them to do to you. And so in there is he's defining really this concept of empathy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to treat you how I think you want to be treated based on my own self-awareness of how I want to be treated. And so it, there's a reason that is known as the golden rule. It's the reason that is just a profound axiom, a profound truth defining morality. In fact, Jesus says, uh, on this is built all the law and the prophets. He's basically, you could summarize, that's one way of summarizing the morality of the Old Testament is treat others how you would want to be treated. Really, he's describing empathy. I have to get in the mind of someone else and to try and understand how they would want to be treated and, and, or how they, or, or what their life experience is or how they're feeling. Like I have to get into, I have to be aware of someone else's uh, life experience. And so this idea of empathy is not just something that is, uh, well, it's what, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, no, it's, it's actually pretty foundational and it's, it's pretty foundational to, uh, uh emotional intelligence we talked about. And, and it, there's a, tremendous power in empathy. And I think this is really part of the driving force of if we want to be in loving relationships with, whether it's in marriage, whether it's with our parents, if it's out in in our city as we're going to work or dealing with neighbors or friends or family members, whatever it is, empathy is such a core part of that. And so that's why we're giving so much space to this. And we've been talking more conceptually, but now we're, we're bringing in a little bit more practically. Yeah, I love how we in these past uh, three um, uh, discussions, we've laid the groundwork, mm-hmm. we've laid the foundation of uh, what it is and its importance. And now we'll be transitioning to actually applying it in mm-hmm. our spaces of influence and in uh, you know, relationships. Yep. Uh, today, we'll be talking about listening. Yes. Now, what's the connection between empathy and and listening? Sure. So this is one of the practices of empathy. In these next few episodes, we'll be talking about um, various practices to living out empathy. And one of those is is listening. Mm. Now, this is one of those things. There's just so many benefits to listening. We can talk about this in a lot of different ways. So this is not intended to be exhaustive on the subject of listening. Um, I mean, it's just a a part of wisdom is to listen. If I'm in a relationship, whether it's a work relationship um, or or in any relationship, there's just wisdom to first seek to understand before seeking to be understood. You know, I want to understand first. We've all been in a conversation where, you know, you you catch yourself like talking to someone there. You're saying, well, what about this? And you're responding, responding, responding. And then at the end of all this long response, like, yeah, that that's not at all. You're not even speaking to what I was talking about. And it's, you know, you you realize, okay, that, that didn't go well. There's just good wisdom to listening, but specifically to your point, Jeremy, let's make the link to, to empathy. Listening is absolutely essential to empathy because listening is what informs empathy. So we talked about one of the one of the powers, powerful aspects of empathy is I'm relationally being known by someone. Mm-hmm. I, I if I if someone is being empathetic towards me and to what I'm walking through, I feel understood. I feel known. I feel like they're entering in to what I'm walking through, and I feel so much support. I feel so much encouragement just by the fact that they that I that I'm known and understood. And so listening is is a key part of that because I can't, I can't really appreciate and understand someone else. I can't anticipate what they may need. I can't even anticipate on how I should treat them if I'm not stopping first to, to listen to them. So listening is, there's a link with, with empathy in that it, it, it informs uh, empathy. It teaches me how to be empathetic with someone. It helps me understand them when I'm, when I'm listening. But there's a second part of this, and it speaks to one of the other aspects of empathy that's so critical. Empathy is critical in how it helps us cross barriers. Mm. 
And so uh, it's hard to cross barriers. Maybe it's whether it's generationally, whether it's culturally, or especially right now in our society, politically, we can't cross any of those barriers with uh, to, to show empathy if we don't listen. So where there's differences of opinion generationally, maybe it's a an older generation like, oh, this younger generation in the workforce that I have to work with these, this younger generation, they, they just don't understand. Or it's maybe an older generation where it's, where it's like, oh man, I, why do they always do that? I can't understand. Well, you can't empathize with where they're coming from as a younger generation or an older generation unless you first listen. Ask about their life experience. Um, there are things uh, cross-culturally that are hard to understand. And then we can just create kind of empty stereotypes or even prejudices towards someone across cultural across cultures that lack complete empathy and can do really, really major damage, not just interpersonally, but societally. But if we can show empathy to someone of a cross culture, that that brings healing. That's a step towards unity. Well, I can't do that unless I stop and listen and say, hey, help me understand. Help mm-hmm. me understand that. Politically, our, we are in a, 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 a season of great, great division and what seems like increasing divide. And sometimes some people that are on the left are like, how could people on the right even think that way? And some people on the, on the right are like, how could people on the left even think that way? Well, it would, it would help to create unity. It doesn't necessarily mean unanimity. Um, it doesn't mean um, that we're all agreeing, but it can create unity if we can at least empathize and we can't empathize if we don't first listen. If we can at least listen, that doesn't mean we're convincing each other, but at least we can understand and there can be a greater, greater harmony and we can learn from each other. So Unity um, is important. It, it, empathy is needed for that, but we can't even get to empathy until we listen. So listen, it, listening is critical practice for empathy because it informs empathy. Mm. Uh, I love how it's through listening, it's seeking to understand. Uh, it also has the impact to relational depth. Yes. And how you said like crosses barriers, yes. which... I mean that that's something really hard to yeah. do in a world where, as far as generationally, culturally, and also p- politically, sure. there's there are a lot of divisions. But it's listening that can be the gateway into um, providing a sense of unity, under- understanding between you know two parties. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so there, there's a lot of importance to it, but how how do you actually apply it? Yeah, because it's it's easy to understand, but sure. sometimes really hard to implement. Right. Absolutely. And, um, there's, there's fake listening. Um, oh <laughs> so, um, I, uh, this is also, by the way, all, all of this discussion on empathy is it's intimidating to, to discuss because, yeah. you know, like we talked about in the episode on emotional intelligence, I mean, no one's an emotional genius. No. <laughs> you know, we, we're all, this is all something we're trying to grow in. And I, I know even in listening, Man, I, there's ways I still want to to grow. There's moments I've blown it. I can even just think in the last few days moments that I've totally blown it in this area. But um, but it's important for us to you know discuss and to, to grow in. But there's fake listening. Fake listening yeah. is uh, it, it's it, listening is not not speaking. That's just being quiet. And so sometimes I can someone else can be talking and we've all done this and we've all experienced this where someone, you know, you're talking, you're sharing and someone stopped blinking. They're still looking in your direction and they're still nodding, but it's been a long time <laughs> since they've blinked and you get the feeling that they're looking through you and maybe thinking about what they're either going to say next or they're thinking about what they're going to what they're going to do after this conversation or they've gone back to thinking about, you know, the football game they watched the night before or whatever it is. Um, uh, fake listening is just waiting for your turn to talk. Fake listening is, um, taking the, the time while they're talking to think about your response. Fake listening is waiting for, waiting for your turn to strike back. That's not, mm. that's not real listening. Real listening is, uh, something we're doing. It's actually a real listening is actually a whole body experience because you, it starts with your mind. It's like, is my brain literally engaged with what they're saying? Like, am I actually concentrating on their words? Am I thinking about it or is my mind wandering? It sounds so basic, but man, as a grown adult, I still struggle with that sometimes. Is my mind, is my brain engaged with listening? 
Um, secondly, is my heart engaged? Like, am I, if I want to be, if I want empathy informed, am I not just listening for, for data, but am I like entering into the emotion they're trying to express? Am I trying to enter into their, what am I asking in my, my mind? Well, what must it be? Um, what must it be like to be in their situation? It's listening with my heart. Am I actually, not only am I trying to understand their emotions, but is, is actually my heart in it to try to understand them? You know, am I like, oh, when is this conversation going to be over? Or am I like, no, man, this is a human that's got life experience that I want to, my heart is, is wanting to understand. Mm. Um, it's listening with, with my face and my body, my posture. I mean, we can, um, we, we can be hearing words, but not communicating that we're listening. Can, is it eye contact, facial expressions, those nonverbals of, of communicating back? Like I hear you nodding and in agreement, you know, or sometimes we can, we can be, uh, we can be listening like this and kind of like looking somewhere else. Eye contact is important. Yeah. Listening with our mind, our heart, our face, and on, honestly listening with our words. Uh, just because someone's done talking doesn't mean that I need to be done listening. I, I can ask follow-up questions back to make sure I understand. I can stay curious in the conversation and ask for more information. Sometimes that second that second question is so powerful because it communicates, I truly do want to know what you're saying and I yeah. truly want to understand and I, I want to go to another level. So real listening is not simply... I'm not speaking right now and waiting for you to get done so I can jump in. It's I'm it's a whole body experience. It's mind, heart, body, words. I want to understand you and and if I take that kind of listening posture whether it's in my I mean first and foremost in my marriage with my kids, with a friend, it's uh, uh with a coworker, you know, with whether it's uh, a a peer, a boss, a, a someone who reports to me I'm in any in any human relationship that full person listening informs empathy and that that is powerful in a yeah. relationship i that is a, extremely uh, powerful i mean i think i mean it ties back into one of our earlier episodes when we were talking about the, the golden rule like mm-hmm. I, I feel like a huge a, a big way to enter into listening um is just imagining what they want in this moment like if I if I were in their shoes, sure. how would I want somebody to react to what I'm saying? How how would I want somebody to respond? How would I want somebody to listen to me? And so you give them what you would want if you sure. were in their shoes. Absolutely. I, I I have a question though. What it how, how would you discern the moments where okay I I just got to listen to this person, hmm. and there are other moments where it's like. You know, maybe maybe I should speak up. Sure, because I, I, there there there's a balance. Sure. Would you say? Yeah. What what would be like a good like? Yeah. Way to. So that's a great question. There are there is time. There's a time to listen, and then there is a time to speak. Um. I would say maybe a couple of things. Almost always, I mean, virtually always, we listen first. Um. There's a rare occasion where you don't, and I can't even think of one right now, but I'm sure there's someone, some out there. But like, let's just say virtually always, you you know, 999 times out of a thousand or more, you're you're listening first. And then sometimes that's all that was needed. All that was needed was they just needed a listening ear. Sometimes, um, sometimes they're they are looking for feedback or or uh, input. Um, and I think part of it is, um, the nature of the relationship with that person or is, is, have they invited that in? Um, and so, um, I think, I think it, that's, I think that depends a lot on the nature of the relationship and the nature on how the conversation, you know, uh, came about. And I think a lot of times we can try to take cues from the, from the conversation, um, Hey, are they looking for feedback or, or are they looking for, are they looking really just for me to listen. And I think usually, especially if it's a friendship, usually it's, it's they're they're looking to, they're looking just for, um, for listening. And a lot of times what can happen is if I leave listening, if I just stop at listening, if they were looking for more, they will open it up. They'll be like, well, well, give me some feedback. Like, you know, what do you think? What should, what do you think I should do? Like a lot of times they will invite that in. And, um, if it's someone that I don't know super well and I don't know the cues, uh, a lot of times just listening and, and a lot of time, I mean, a lot, a lot of times, especially in friendships and in marriage, the, 
person knows, they already know the answer. They don't need me to say it. That's not the mystery. The mystery is not, and what do I do? A lot of times the mystery is just simply, I needed someone to, to understand me. And and if if they really want feedback, they'd, they'd communicate it. A lot of times. A I lot mean, of if time. someone's in danger, they're about to do something terrible and wreck their life or, yeah. or, or hurt themselves or someone else, of course we jump in. Yeah. But if it's if, in the normal course of conversation, someone just sharing, um, I think you always listen first, but um, usually they, they will invite you in. Okay. Well, give us give us one practical takeaway. Sure, um, I I think just one just quickly one practical thing is today just take a listening audit of yourself. Um, just think through your interactions and uh, think ahead to your interactions. What kind of listener ha- were you? What kind of listener do you want to be? Just kind of today take a listening audit. Did you give good eye contact? Did you jump in with solutions or did you seek to understand first? Um, was your heart engaged or were you just kind of always thinking uh, on what to say next? Did you ask follow-up questions? Um, did you zone out? You know, I think that kind of thing of just take a listening audit and then also just be conscious of how did that then inform kind of an empathetic posture towards someone. Okay. Well, thank you, Roby, for sharing. Um, I hope that uh, this episode was impactful to you. Uh, we'll see you back on the next episode of the City Rev Life podcast. Thank you so much for listening to the City Rev Life podcast. Feel free to subscribe or leave a rate and review. If you want more content or additional resources, head to cityrev.org or download our app. We hope you have a great day.